maybe if we can if maybe if we can crank through we can hit it before the patch hits i have it recorded um just in case but obviously a replay code's better than than uh recording right. so if we could if we utilize sure. that so okay um well, i'm an idiot it's already of course it's already in my thing so it was busan yes i think i believe yes i believe so. yeah 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 i remember it's like a little bit hit scan so masters hit scan and in a scrim which is unusual so um Okay, let's just start with this. Let's just start with this before I, without going too in detail with the form. What got you interested in coaching? Um, uh, essentially, I, I've been getting coaching from a lot of different coaches beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. I've been into esports for a good while, and my biggest motivation in trying to get better was Overwatch League, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Which, Sorry to hear that. <laughs> it, yeah, murdered me when I was watching the grand finals, and they're like, "All right, bye." I was like, "Oh, yeah, okay. they're yeah. the past three years." But um, uh, no, yeah, I. It's it's fun to me to be as good as I can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, makes sense. And and you're it's primarily a hit scan player. How long have you been playing Overwatch? Uh, I've been playing Overwatch for about four or five years. Okay. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. And why hit scan specifically? Um, mostly just because I come, I didn't come from uh, other games, but I just, uh, I came from other situations where I just liked aim. I liked working on aim and seeing it get better made me happy. And I feel like that applies the best to hit scan. Okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, well, I guess uh, we can just go right into the gameplay if you want. Um, any questions that you had before we just take a look? Uh, do you? I don't know what you're doing on your end. Do you mind if I record this from my end? So I can yeah, of course. Later. I'll record on my end, and I'll have to send you the link afterwards. But you're more than welcome to record on your end too. Oh yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, let's take a look here. So Bastion, lovely. Uh, so how often do you guys scrimmage? Uh, we scrim. I'm pretty sure it's four or five days a week. I okay. just recently joined this new team. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. So, uh, any questions on your role in this composition? Let's see how much Bastion do we see here. Uh, Bastion and then Sojourn and then Cassidy. I, I do some weird swap. And then Soldier. <laughs> oh my yeah. days. Okay, so I, I guess the question then is, is, is well, let's just go. To, let's just start with your execution of Bastion, and then we'll ask why did you swap and what could you have done better with that swap. Um, okay, let's uh, let's take a look here. I appreciate yeah, the intention. I appreciate the up. intention. Now, but but let, let's actually talk about this. So, like, what what are the strengths of Bastion? Uh, in my opinion, the strengths of Bastion are uh, using turret form to uh, hold back pushes or be yeah. a oppressive wall of damage. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. So you can kind of see how, like, okay, regardless of the fact that you had to use your, your nade for it, how this doesn't exactly fit that bill. Um, it's not necessarily really necessary. So... What I see here is I see an opportunity right here to nade backline, right? Okay. S stick brig shield, right? Consistent damage. I'm gonna honestly even stick Doom now that he's finished blocking, and then really just more than anything else to either just shoot Doom fist or if you wanted to walk aggressively, walk in the angle here and press shift. All right. Because one of the advantages of Doom fist is is that, I mean. You're freaking ridiculous. 300 HP with armor plus the damage reduction of uh, the, the the tank configuration, right? Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Like your survivability is insane, and your head hit box is also hidden behind you too. So, um, you know, obviously you you mess up the grenade here, but I think even the opportunity there for for the nade and backline was there, and then also just play a little, playing a little bit more aggressively. I mean, obviously that was your initial intention, um, but I, I don't even think you necessarily need the nade jump to do. Um, and then obviously the that nade really needs to hit too. Right. I know uh, it was like just this patch I've started learning to play Bastion because I've got been it. a hit the game player. I've, I've been stuck. Right, player. right, right, uh, right. We'll, we'll, we'll see if he sticks around. Um, I'm not honestly sure how, how much he's going to stick around, all things considering. Um, but I guess we could wait and see. I go Soj, Cass, and then Soldier mostly because I think like there's a good bit there where I... Uh, I was being caught out 
Yeah. And instead of fixing my rotations, I think I want to just swap to faster characters. Right, which right. Make, didn't makes end sense. up working. They were they still got me. Right, right. Which 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 makes sense. I, I I think like whenever whenever you have a hero pool, you're you're more than welcome to swap to like whatever ones you're you're most comfortable on. Um, but you also like you said, is like you need to be able to. There is a lot of value also just finding out like what the problem was with the character I was playing and the way that I was playing it too. So you don't want to like band aid your way through it because it'll win you a match maybe or may win you a map, but it's not really going to solve the problem that you had with the character in the first place. So I look at this here. And I think you'd agree with me. Sojourn should be okay versus this. Mm-hmm. Um, why Sojourn? Let's let's talk about why you swap. Why do you pick Sojourn versus this composition? Uh, I picked Sojourn because I knew uh, their dives were kind of just one big burst of right. damage, and I was hoping I could slide out of it. Uh, yeah. and also claim the verticality of this map. Yeah, sure, sure. Get a little bit of range. Get a little bit of verticality. Uh, still have a, a defensive option. Okay, let's let's see what we do. Kind of unfortunate that that doesn't catch anything. It's a pretty big cooldown. Team's making some swaps here. <laughs> to be honest with you, main thing here is I would have liked the the E to be used to have been available here, right? Your disruptor shot, right? Um, and then the other thing you have to be aware of as well is obviously as quickly as you can being able to disengage before the CC comes in. Um, case in point, this is, there's not a lot of time to react. That being said, I don't think it's necessarily all your fault. So we keep going. Good disruptor shot. What do you think about this shot right here? Uh, I think it was premature. Okay. I, I know one of the strengths of Disruptor Shot is it's really bright and really, you can see it, and it's almost like seeing a widow on yeah. high ground. It's threatening. Right, right. I need right. to hold it longer. Okay, okay, okay. It does zone out the brig, though. But we'll take that, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Looking good. You know, it's kind of funny if you if you noticed a little bit here. If they set up the perfect dive, even your Sojourn slide won't save you. Yeah. It's not enough. So a lot of what your responsibility is going to be kind is, is to try to find the dive and pressure the dive before it actually happens. Just a little bit here. Like there, you 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 clear the somber out and you push forward. Are you going to die right here? absolutely okay why so uh because one i'm separating myself from uh anyone who could save me and also i've walked like right in the middle of uh where they're wanting to dive right right so but let's let me ask you a question do you know where the sombra is no check this out she is way out well, that's kind of a bad decision by her but the funny thing is is you pushing forward here isn't necessarily a bad thing because you cleared Sombra out. Problem is, is that the way that you pushed forward has totally isolated you from your supports. That's mm -hmm. the main problem. Does that kind of make sense? So I actually, yeah. I actually like you walking forward here. I just preferred you to like actually walk forward with your team. Okay. So that's going to be like, ah, crap, 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 crap. And, and, and so again, like you're, you're utilizing your slide, but it just didn't matter because you were totally isolated. here. Right. Okay. And this is yep. the, this is the swap where it stops making sense, right? Um, you know, Bastion was a little bit of a misplay, but I can see the logic behind Sojourn, you know, being a little bit better versus the dive, especially if you guys go like Kiriko and stuff like that. That makes total sense to me. But this one, so let's talk about why you made the swap. Do you remember? So, um, yeah, I know. This is when uh, this is actually pretty shortly after that whole announcement thing happened, and I was in my head a lot of these scrims. So immediately I'm getting dove and I got frustrated. So I just was like, okay, I'll swap to, to hinder, hinder big. And right. I went like pretty small animal brain. And after like one or two deaths, I realized, oh God, I'm a dumbass and swapped a soldier. 
Right, right. Now, the funny thing is, is going hinders. It's like, is this going to stop? Would that have saved you in that last engage when you split from yourself? Oh, God, no. Would that have saved you in the dive prior to that when you got like comboed inside of the entire enemy team? Right. No. Not really either. I don't think this is the solution here. The problem is, is that not only have you lost old charge here, but when you put your attention onto swaps and not into how you're playing, not only do you not learn, but you don't, you're, you're missing, you're, you're putting attention where it doesn't deserve, right? Um, I think this is one of the problems about having a, a bigger hero pool. It's like, it's great that you can play a lot of characters in a lot of circumstances, but you're not paying attention to the important things, which has been simply, not to sound corny, but grouping up with your team. In fact, you're about to get, you really need to get out of here. <laughs> I was going to say, don't make the same mistake that you had earlier, because otherwise we're going to be starting to snowball all over again. Obviously, that hinders not great. Why? Oh, why did I use it? I just wanted to build charge. I was hoping sure. to catch someone and get damage. Sure, sure. But what do you think is going to happen in the next five seconds? Six seconds? I, they'd say, oh, they, he doesn't have hinder, and they dive in. Right. Or even your, your team's going to walk forward, right? Like, your team's about to actually take action here, and, and they would really like for you to have hinder so that you could actually walk forward here. Case in point, right? And so now you've kind of opened the floodgates there where that hinder... I mean, I think that hinder stops Doom from being able to ult, right? I think. Mm -hmm. I do the so, same exact thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. And, offensively. And right. Offensively. And you almost hit her, too. Like, you actually aimed it pretty quite, like pretty well. Like, you almost got her. But then again, you've kind of opened the floodgates there, right? Yeah. So, this is the way I like to think of hinder in the, the micro. I want you to coach yourself in the micro here. because I know we're kind of moving pretty quickly here. So, you know she's coming around the corner. So, you predict the shot. Now, I will be honest with you. I think a lesser tracer could get caught by this. I think this could work. But like, let's say this tracer is a little bit smarter. What she's gonna do? What is she gonna do movement-wise coming out of this choke? She's gonna blink. Right. So then she's gonna avoid the hinder, right? Um, which is kind of what happens. You see that? Um, yeah. So then, how would you use your hinder? Like, let's say versus a tracer that you you respect. Um. If in that exact situation, try to, if I was trying to get something lucky, try to predict where she's going to blink. Sure. Which would, you know, be to the right. There's no way she's going to, I can right. if she blinks to the left. But, um, right. Act, actually use it when she's a hell of a lot closer. I sure. Less way. time to react, right? And see, the other thing too is if you were to throw your hinder now, she, in theory, even if she had like laser reaction time, what would she need to do if you were to throw it like right now? Uh, recall or blink. Recall or blink again. And so what you've done is you've kind of forced... See, Tracer doesn't want to chain blinks together too much because that's going to leave her without blinks pretty quickly, right? So if you force her to blink again right now, she's going to have zero blinks. You notice that? So even if you don't hit the hinder, if you could kind of you know bait her first blink, then hinder, you're going to kind of put yourself at a, a slight cooldown and advantage even if you don't hit the hinder. Does that make sense? Right. So force her to, to force make her dance, you know, like the old cowboy moves, you know. Um, whereas this one is like just a little too early. Oh! Nice clutch. Nice shot, though. That that was that was huge. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going here. This is like a great, a great, great representation of what's going on so far. You hit the hinder, you hit the shot, nice job. You're even ready for the dive, nice job, but... <laughs> Away from the entire team, yeah. Right, so I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. Whenever I see problems like these in ranked, I blame you. Because you should be taking care of yourself and handling your own thing. You need to be aware of your team's position. Mm -hmm. In team play, I think it's a 50-50, right? Your team needs to be aware of you. You need to be aware of your team. GG's, right? Mm -hmm. Your team isn't in the call right now, so I'm going to put all the blame on you. Um, but you said you were new with this team. This is just something to be aware of. That this right. seems to be a consistent issue where either whether it's your, your, you know, your tank's not listening to you or you're not listening to your tank or your supports or whatever, whatever the, whoever's at fault there, it doesn't really matter. But this is a major problem because the funny thing is, is you actually don't play this one too badly, right? You hit the shot, you roll out, you get the stick, you get a trade here, which is great for your team, all things considered. But it's actually crazy that 
that you just did that because you're by yourself. And then now you swap again because if we had replayed that previous fight, if you had been on Soldier, you would have lived that dive, right? No. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you would have died. You would have died even faster, right? So you got to see the issue. Like, again, you're like, you're trying to address the problem here, but the, the problem has been the same every single time. You're not with your team. Right. It's That's it. Mechanic, not character. Right. It's, it's not, it's not your mechanics or the character. It's, it's like, you're just not with your team. That's it. So, I mean, the soldiers, I guess. Okay. So what's, what's the theory behind the soldier? I guess, obviously in the moment, like what was your logic here? Cause I, I think it, it, it can work. The theory behind the soldier was I was hoping to actually take two, uh, take an off angle successfully, and I was hoping the run and the heals would help me. And I was uh, trying to come with our Kiriko to try to come with me because it's normally Soj Kiriko that takes off mm, angles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. go or jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you have like all the all the boxes checked. Like you know what you're doing, right? Like there's this is why I play soldier. This is why I play Cassie. This is why I play Sojourn. Um, but then when it comes down to execution you're fumbling the most basic aspect, which is just position an angle around your team, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not that an angle is bad, but when you're totally, totally by yourself versus that many people, it's bad. So, uh, you know, this could work. Uh, let's just see how you do with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, neither of my escapes help. Well, let's ask, let's ask yourself a question here. Who, was this something that you should have been like? Was this your fault? Like, I, I wish we had access to communication now, but I guess what do you see here? Uh, kind of like yeah. it, it kind of looks like you didn't hear the push call, mm -hmm. or that you thought that you could deal with the tracer on point, or that was a priority. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now it's actually kind of funny because the result of this isn't even that bad because you take three people. You kind of live for a while, right? And that allows your team to kill the backline. But I, I think you could have had your cake and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? I think you could have been able to live that um, and contribute to your team's dive. So I'm really curious what's going to happen next. Oh, you stay soldier. Wow, I'm impressed. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, and I think that's probably the most like panic hero pick I've had in a good minute. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 so, so what do you think so far? I mean, it's been really simple, right? Uh, yeah. They've been real simple. It's like the, the core of what's going on. Right. Where's my team set up to situate around the team? And it makes sense that you're new to these guys, right? So I think a lot of these issues are going to kind of solve themselves. But, you know, in the meantime, like right now, it's like, are you isolated right now? Um... Looks okay-ish. Looks okay-ish for now, but that might change. Um, you know, th there's two ways that I look at this, right? Okay. You could either play with your team, not necessarily with your team, but like around your team. Or you could understand that, you know, I'm just going to die. <laughs> so I'm going to get isolated and killed and there's not a lot my team can do for it. So I'm going to try and be as expensive as I possibly can of a death. Does that make sense? Like, I'm going to isolate myself and be as baity. Like, I'm going to run away over here and shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, dude, just look at me. Run away, run away, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, run away, run away, shoot, 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 baby. You know, and just be a total rat. That would work, too. Mm -hmm. But you just need to kind of pick which one you would lean into. Um, does that make sense? Right. I, I did notice, like, here, I'm playing the soldier in a more sojourn style. Mm-hmm. More brawly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah up and close. Like right now, do you see like you're you're kind of now you're grouping up with your team a little bit, right? Which is fine. Now we're playing bait, right? You just needed to dodge the punch on the corner, right? You were like literally a quarter of a second away from getting. I mean, look at how close this was. It's was actually agony. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, come on, man! You got scammed. You got scammed. Okay. You got scammed. But you, you, the thing is, it's like you're doing the right thing, you know, so we can we can live with that, you know. You did the right thing. That was smart. Yeah, I got real annoyed with him. He sold ult me quite a few times. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nobody else really to ult here. So um, right. I will say here as well, rollout-wise, you know that the fight's going to be breaking out in point and things are going to be really messy. So why roll out in point? Check this out. Roll out here. 
Okay. You got me? Yeah. Probably a better sightline in this situation. It's going to play to your strengths as well. Like you said, it's kind of like you're in that brawly mindset with your positioning. But you don't necessarily, you kind of you kind of gave the Doomfist, you know, that opportunity to engage by positioning on the floor. And really, if you're playing soldier, this is the, really one of the last places you want to be. Be a little bit more forgiving if you're Cassidy, if you're a Sojourn. Uh, obviously, if you're a Bastion or Reaper, too. If you can reposition, even not necessarily, you know, totally spit from your team, because you saw that it goes so well either. But on an angle, right? On an angle. Right. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it's unfortunate because I feel like the majority of your, your issues are just really simple, right? Which means there's not a ton to learn. Um, so I guess before we keep going, do you have any questions? Um, not particularly yet. Um, so they are, I have one bigger one, uh, in the original first comp with the Bastion. Yes. Um, I guess since I'm now, uh, learning Bastion cause he's still strong. Um, yeah. How do you go about playing that? Because I've I've gone back and forth from being uh, playing pokey and playing more brawly, and it's I don't know, it's never felt like I, I got into the groove of it. Think, think. Here's what you do: you think more about like Bastion is um, a little bit of a dynamic character, right? Um, obviously, a little bit more one dimensional than a lot of DPS, but he has some dynamics. And so you look at the enemy composition and you go, okay, what are what are my strengths? How should I be playing? So. It's less about like knowing what you're doing on rollout and more about knowing what I'm good at. Let's see what opportunities I'm given. So you roll out in the enemy composition right here. What do you need to be trying to do? We kind of talked about it already, but like, what do you need to be trying to do versus this comp? Uh, essentially, just ugh, find out where the dive is and sure. stop their dive before it happens. Play quicker than they do. Sure, you can. You can. If what will their Sombra try to do? Uh, what will their Tracer Doom try to do to you? Dive, yeah. Okay, so what form do you need to be in when they're diving? My turret. Right, why? Uh, because one of the most recent buff of his, and also uh, dive is broken up by a lot of damage. Right, right, exactly. So you're, you're tankier, right? Uh, you do more damage. You're harder to kill. So you need your turret form to deny dive. Now, what about your grenade? That I would say use offensively used to find uh, to exploit the wrong rotation stuff like that. Sure, sure, absolutely. So all you do is you look at their comp and go like, all right, well I'm gonna try to make sure that I turret their dive. That's pretty much it. Uh, and then trying to use nade either on a squishy, whether that's on on a brick or whether that's on somber or a tracer. Honestly, even a doomfist when he's not using his block is good, right? Um, now, what if have you have you guys played into a brawl mirror before, like a Ryan brawl mirror? We have in the past. Okay, so the, how do you play Bastion into that? Uh, well, yeah, when uh, Ryan starts, Ryan and his team starts their uh, push in, you do the turret form to kill their momentum. Sure. What about your Ryan push? Our Ryan push. I would you get what I'm saying? Like, are you waiting for them to push before you turret, or are you, are you pushing with your team with turret, or what? I would... I've always thought about it as defensively. Okay. Now I'm thinking about it defensively. Okay. I, I think it can go either way. If you pop your turret form with your May wall push, right? Mm -hmm. What will their May have to do? Wall. Wall, Better. right? So you kind of, you've created, you've forced their engage by forcing your engage. What will their Ryan have to do if he sees you in turret form? Hold shield. So You'll have to hold shield. So you're going to whittle down his shield. You break his shield, is he going to be able to push anymore? Yeah, absolutely not. Right. So it's it's almost like if you could get a good cycle from your team, you don't need to worry about, oh, holding it defensively. If they go first and you have to react, that's okay because the Bastion stops them from having too much punish on theirs. So really it's like if one Bastion uses turret form and neither team is pushing, that's when it gets really bad. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if just using it for the push and then also, like I said, Crucially, hitting those nades, right? A, a nade on a bat, uh, a may forces ice block, huge value. Nade on a Batiste to force a lamp or to force a shift, huge value. You kind of see what I'm saying, right? 
Um, so it's actually quite easy, right? Now, what about bashing it into, like, let's say, poke? Let's say you're playing into, like, snipers, like, with this rank combo. How would you do turret form that way? Um, I'm not sure immediately. Um, I would think to try to take off angles on, or to kill their off angles. If poke. Sure. Sure. It's hard. You know, to kind of think of it, but it's still like one of the best 1v1 abilities in the game, right? So if you if a Hanzo jumps in you, you know, whip out the turret form, get him out. Uh, if Sigma throws a shield out, break shield, forces shift, right? Um, don't think of it as like, I have to secure kills every single time in this ability. Just need to force cooldowns. You need to force them out. Win duels, force cooldowns, survive dives, things like that. Does that make sense? Like um, rail, where it's more of a threat. Right, exactly. So what you could do is you're like, well, I don't really know how to play Bastion in these circumstances. Well, you already know what makes Bastion strong. It's that nade and that turret form, right? So think about whatever you're playing versus, even if it's a hybrid dive spam or spam brawl or whatever, and think, where is my turret form going to be the most useful? When should I pop it? And you can even go back and, you know, obviously ignoring situations like these, you know, where it's just a goofy mistake, and go back and be like, hey, was that a good time for turret form? Did I get good value out of it? Did I force a lot of CDs? Was it reasonable to use it? And if not, what do I need to be looking for in the future? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Okay. okay. Um, Good to see you. Let's take a look here. Same kind of thing here. We know how we're using our slide. We know what we're looking for. Unfortunate. <laughs> now, this is kind of funny. Because you're like, oh, I use my slide aggressively. That's bad because they're playing Sombra Tracer, right? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? It's Where's their Sombra Tracer? Where's their Sombra Tracer? Isn't anywhere near. And if they were to dive, in all reality, they don't have the queen. They don't have the same dive as they did with Doom. So it's not as bad. You kind of juked their dive a little bit. When you went up here, I don't think they were expecting you to be here. So they were not set up to punish you. See, one of the things about Sombra and Tracer is that they're very fast, but they're not infinitely fast, right? So if you take an angle and you catch them off guard and you shoot them down, they can't punish you for not having your slide here. So if you use your slide to get some extra damage early, sometimes you can mess up the dive before it happens. This is a perfect example, right? Look at this, right? It's pretty good damage, right? The force is a shout defensively. Can they dive you now for not having your shift? No. No way. No way. They could even hack you right now and you still wouldn't die. It'd be possible. So generally, I want you to use your slide defensively. But if using your slide aggressively allows you to kind of force out things before they can actually dive you, then it's good. Now, the reason why I'm emphasizing this so much is there's something else that falls in this category too. What if you were to bash in turret form right now before they dove? What would this force? It would force them to use natural cover. They would back up. Right? Probably shout too. Maybe even Suzu. Yeah. If back in, in what in, now would they be in a good position to punish you after you use your turret form? No, so it's maybe not, getting right? Cooldowns out. Maybe not. Now they might be able to get the Sombra Tracer on you, but they wouldn't have Shout, they wouldn't have Suzu. You kind of see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, it'd be a so dive. generally, some cooldowns are better used defensively, but so Slide, Bastion form, um, even Cassidy's stick, right? Like if let's say you stuck the queen right now and got her to one HP before you even get dove. That's okay. It means that you're more vulnerable to Sombra Tracer, yeah, but you're, you've are you just completely crippled them elsewhere. Um, you ever played Ana? I assume, yes. Hit an offensive anti-nade, you sometimes don't even need to use it defensively. You kind of see oh. what I'm saying? It's the same kind of logic. Same kind of logic. Where you're not even thinking about getting dove because you've done so much damage early and often that you, you it just feels like, oh, I don't even need to worry about my slide, right? Because I'm, okay, now I do. But now you have it again. Does that kind of make sense? So that was a good angle. I like that angle. Obviously, disruptor shot was a little suspicious, but besides that, it's all right. Now, the question is, is are you going to be able to find that damage all the time? That's Summer Tracer's challenge. Can we avoid that Sojourn's damage? Um, I, I mean... It just depends on where I'm positioned. I sure. What do you think about this slide? Let's look about it on a case-by-case -case basis, right? I did not need to use that. Or, okay. It got me out of the LOS of Doomfist, so I'm not... He, again, he does not know where you are. Yeah. Do you know where Sombra Tracer are? 
Uh, in game, I did not know. Okay. I think you knew where Tracer was. Yeah, you know where Tracer oh, was. Yeah. Is that Tracer going to punish you for this slide? Okay. Yeah, no, so that was... She's not, so that's, a, that's an all right slide. It's probably okay, right? Probably okay. Now, I would still be scared of, like, maybe the Doomfist, so it, it ended up working out pretty well, but, uh, you know, it's all right. Mm -hmm. No way, this is where she was positioned. <laughs> <laughs> Now, why does this not work? Oh, the Sombra's dead. We can push, right? Oh, dear. I got kicked. Rip. We'll, we'll go to the... Um... Uh -uh. Give me one second here. Sorry if I accidentally interrupt you every now and then. I very much so talk out loud. No, 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 no. You're totally fine. Give me one second. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going here. I, I I want you to be careful. Um, I guess you were nated, so I guess it's all right. But be careful about these slides. I think you're definitely getting punished for these mid-fight slides. Because look at what the slide accomplishes. I know you're needed, but look at your HP. Mm -hmm. And also look at who they're focusing right now. See this? Yeah. You're taking literally zero damage. You're, you're pro you're, you, you need to think of yourself as, as full HP. Because you are, essentially, with a shout. So what happens is you get a little nervous, you jump out. But now what are you exposed to? Uh, being singled out, a dive. And Shocker, right? Right, and that's exactly what happens immediately afterwards. Exactly what happens. Exactly what happens. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Surely this will solve the issue. <laughs> now, now, what have your issues with Sojourn been in terms of you dying this round? I think it's just uh, slide usage. Yeah, slide management. What about your slide usage? Uh, using it, I don't need it. Right. Okay. Right. And so, is this going to solve the issue here necessarily? No. Right. Now, the soldier's not bad here. The soldier's not bad here. Good damage, good range. You have tools to avoid dives for sure. But obviously, not so certain that's going to solve the issue either. Mm -hmm. Huh. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. I That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Now, I want to talk about this really quick. Cuz what is soldier strong? At? What do you want to do with this character? Uh soldier strong at pressure from a distance. Okay. And using your mobility to do things like this, right? Mhm. Mm so why why do you get punished for this? This is taking an offing. Can you just never take an offing versus a doom fist? No, it's doing it before the fight begins when they have all their cooldowns. That's it, exactly. Like look at your team. Your team hasn't actually turned the corner yet. Now, if you had taken this off angle now, I think. Maybe not even now. But like at least allowing your queen to take some heat first, I think that would have gone a lot better. You kind of see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That being said, I, I do want to point out that we are doing a lot of running. Yeah. You know, so the, the sojourn issue is, is still persisting here. Um, ah, nice. Nice little flick there. Okay, shoot, 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 shoot. Take the angle. This is a little. A, no, it was okay. I think it was reasonably timed. <clears throat> yeah, obviously here you just have to worry about touch. Okay, so what was the issue with Sojourn specifically with Sojourn? What needed to be changed with Sojourn? Uh, I would say timing with, uh, or timing with the slide, and also when to use the slide. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, 
And then when do you need to be using your slide? Let's talk about that. What do you need to be doing better? Uh, I need to be using it more when I'm actually in danger and not just yep. being pressured. Well, there was a couple of slides earlier that you used offensively and got away with. Why? Because they didn't know where I was. Right. So you leveraged your, your, the fact that you had them by surprise, to take an angle. That's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, now, when you did take an angle on Soldier, it didn't always work. Why or why not? Because I would go in for my team actually has gone in. And since I'm the first one, mm -hmm. picking the attention's on me. And you see how through kind of pointing out where things went wrong, we've kind of accumulated a handful of things that you can kind of work on moving forward. Right. Um, so do you have any questions so far? Um, not yet. That actually answered some that I had. Good. I didn't know I had. Good, 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 good. So I, is this going to be Reaper through the, through the rest? I ego pick Widow, I think, at one point. Okay, okay. Um, let's, let's pause for a second. Let's take some notes. Because we just had a really productive discussion here. So, Jern, what needs to be practiced? Let's, I'm putting some notes in your channel just while we just had that discussion. I know we just said this, but what needs to be practiced? Um, I need to practice using slide uh, in correct times, such as using it when I'm actually in danger or when the team doesn't know where I am and can take an offensive angle. Being pressured or when you want to take an offensive. Okay. Um, disruptor shot. Hold what about this? Longer, so it's uh, hold it for longer and use it when it has bigger impact so that it's more threatening and more beneficial. Valuable opportunities. How does that look to you, the way I phrased it there? Is that, is that good? Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Okay. Anything else with the sojourn? Or is that mostly it? I think that was it okay soldier it's just the one angle thing right yeah i i need to wait for my team to push in before i take an off angle a little later open general where is my team on all dps heroes Getting killed, isolated because team had no idea where their team was. And as I said, it was definitely more of a uh, like it was also it wasn't just your fault, right? It was definitely you know your unfamiliarity with the team as well, kind of being an issue. But it's definitely something that that needs to improve quickly if you're going to be able to improve this team. Any questions? Right. Um, about these comps, not particularly okay yet. reaper time i think reaper time yeah well, let's do some uh let's do some reaper time which is also a hero i'm not the most comfortable with even though he's a pretty 2d character yeah he's pretty 2d but i i find that like you got to be really quick with some of the things that you do well otherwise you're not you're going to struggle he's really simple but you need to do those simple things perfectly well mm -hmm. uh otherwise you're, you're, you're kind of screwed so uh, now, why do you guys go Reaper? I assume there's some sort of discussion here. It's not a bad character in this situation, but I'm just curious. Uh, they wanted me to stay in the back line and try to ward off from dives. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that, but uh, but you know, let's uh, let's see how it goes. Maybe I will be proven wrong. Well, so far so good. He was a little by himself, <laughs> which definitely helped things. But, uh, you know, all right. Now, everything about Reaper is closing the distance, right? Now, the funny thing is, is who you close the distance on is almost irrelevant with Reaper. Not, not entirely irrelevant, but almost irrelevant. For example, if you were to TP up to this little balcony up here, can you see my mouse? Mm-hmm. Would that be beneficial for your team right now? Who would not be able to peek out here? Uh, Trace. 
Right. Right. Yeah, I think it would be beneficial. I think and at the time I didn't do it because I thought it would be a waste of cooldown. But then again, when else am I using teleport? Exactly. That's my point, right? It's a little bit of early pressure, clear her out, force some resources. Now, the reason why I assume you didn't do it is because of what happens here. Point, 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 point. At least it seems like it's what your team is calling. But honestly, I don't I don't want you going to point immediately. Like, cause you could be forcing this tracer out first. You could be controlling space. Like, remember, your your character is a short range character. And whether it's a tank, a DPS, or support, you're pretty darn good in 1v1s at that range. So for you, especially in this big, broad, wide open, difficult map, you need to be finding ways where you could output pressure on a short sight lane around your team. And that tracer TP is a perfect one where it's like it's not exactly a kill, not a lot of dopamine to be found there. But it's value. Right. Even here, right? Value. 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 Right? Like, you're winning that duel. You feel it, right? And as long as you don't have to peek the Widow there, it's you're good to go. Nice. Ooh, <laughs> widow. <laughs> I, think you, I think you realize it there, so that's, that's all right. But yeah, scary. He got out, so I got out. And one other thing to note as well, and this is part of the reason, this is where this is why Reaper can be considered really, really weak in some circumstances, is this is feeding. Tell me why. Uh, because I'm pushing in and I have no wraith, so if they were to actually rush onto me, I'd just die. It's the Sojourn Slide mechanic, right? Where, mm -hmm. where if you don't get enough offensive value out of your Wraith, then you need it defensively. And right now, your Wraith hasn't really helped you to do anything offensively. All your, all your, you, you're, if this Kiriko hits a one shot or gets any healing, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. Right? You're screwed. So be really careful about this. Yeah, I want you to try to position aggressively like that, but do so when you have your get out of jail free card. Like now, for example. Now, the funny thing is, is this is where your team's advice is screwing you over. Because who is the more accessible, available, closer target right now? Uh, the rest of the team. The rest of the team. The Kiriko's right there, right? In fact, she's probably going to be shooting. Yeah, okay, yeah, she's peeling off. But that was your opportunity there to either help your Genji control the backline. Maybe you don't get a kill, um, but at the very least, that would have been better than chasing a doofus. And this is why I don't like your team's idea now, I understand that's going to conflict. Like, you need to be a good teammate, right? So this is maybe something to discuss with your team. Because um, if you spend time chasing Doomfist around the map, he has the mobility to avoid you, right? To just run circles around you. So some, you, for you, it's less important that you're shooting the right target and that you're shooting the right range. You see this guy right here? Right off of the side? You need right. to shoot her. You need to make sure that she does not heal her Doomfist. She does not heal her backline, keeping the Genji off. And also that she doesn't damage your team while the Doomfist is diving in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right. Even just forcing her TP is value here. But right, right now, it's like you had to chase Doomfist. It's also cost you your Wraith. And now you're all sitting on a point. GG's. Now, this is good. You just didn't have your Wraith. That's all. It's like, right, she's close, right? So shoot her. You just didn't have your Wraith. That's all. Okay, let's skip forward a little bit. This is where Reaper feels really hard. It's like, how do I get close to anybody, you know? Just in a map like this. Um, yeah, I'm just speaking that. So, is there anybody that you can get close to? Or any sight line that you can strategize around? Or anything that you can come up with? Be creative here. Um, I could TP to the top and try to force the Kirko Doomfist off. Yep. Yep. Is that a close range duel? Uh, it is. Obviously. Now, will you be able to do that by yourself? No. Right. No, so I'd have to ask for help from Genji or Kirko or both. Right. Right. Even Lucio, right? Even Lucio can help you out here. I think that's probably your best play, to be honest with you. And then once you force them off, then what's the next step? Uh, then it's rush at their supports like the last sure. fight. See, see what happens, right? Like, see where things kind of boil out. See who, where people kite. Make a decision. Because the problem with this is it's like, even if the Widow wasn't looking, there really is no way for you to sneak up on anybody because everything is still too far away, right? So the risk is high and the reward is honestly quite low. 
Whereas at least if you TP top, the, the reward is also high, even though the risk is high. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hey, look at that. Now, what's the problem? I'm doing it right in front of a widow. Well, to an extent, maybe that's unavoidable, or at least maybe okay, your TP location could have been better. So yeah, that's definitely a problem. But what else is the problem? I'm doing it alone. You're doing it alone. And not only are you doing it alone, but look at the bottom right. It's your CDs. I have no Wraith. No Wraith. So this is a, a great play, poorly executed and poorly timed, right? Okay. I need my Kiriko, I need my Lucio, and I need my Wraith. Now, it's a good play, and your Genji's there, so maybe it works. Yeah, your Genji actually gets you out. Yeah, so you, you checked one of the boxes, so it works out, right? Mm -hmm. But, oh my days, was it not optimal? You know, again, it's kind of funny here. Is your team calling Kiriko, Kiriko, Kiriko or something? I think so, yeah. Who should you be shooting right now? <laughs> uh, the half dude. <laughs> you know, you know, it's like this is where like you have to sometimes you need to stay like as close as you can to your team. But sometimes you don't have to all be in the same target because you would do so much more damage on that Doomfist than you do on that Kiriko. And then, OK, there's all right. Wraith again. Probably not necessary, obviously. But now really doing this is is insanity because you don't have your Wraith. Now, who should you be shooting now? Uh, the Kiriko because she has no Suzu. Right. Who's closer, Kiriko or Doomfist? Uh, Doomfist. Doomfist, but why should she still shoot the Kiriko? Because uh, she used cooldown. Right, and how look at, look at her HP. Important. Right. She, is she a lot further away than Doomfist, or is it pretty close? It's pretty close. It's pretty close. She prioritizes is squishy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're generally going to be shooting squishies whenever you can, um, but you know we, we prioritize Doomfist when he's close. But if they're both close, or one's only a teeny bit close to the other, pick the Kiriko. Nice. I would get to safety. Thank you. Nice. Just saw a punch. See a low HP tracer. Take it. Nice. That was good. That was very nice. Very strange hero to play sometimes in this cop. You ever feel that? It's like I, I sometimes I feel it's like really hard. Like what on earth am I supposed to be doing? You know. Mm -hmm. um, but but you did well that fight. You did really well. I like the patience here. You're down one, so you need to kind of wait a little bit. Fine. And I went in with no break. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think you just kind of lost where your team was, I think is the problem. I think it's your team is pushing up this way to our left. But yeah, stall it. You're, you're dead here. You should be totally dead. Yeah. Oh my gosh, 30 HP? Okay, you're still dead. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Now, I, 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 see, I'm just going to watch this for you to ego. Let's just see. Let's just see. All right, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I missed it. I missed it. There's not much ego. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, let's go. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, let's, we, won't, we won't over focus on this one. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll take a quick look at your form too as well. But let's, let's write some stuff for you. Reaper, what are some skills to practice? Uh, closing in on the correct target and also use, not using Wraith before initiating. Right. Prioritize targets who are close. Don't chase people without good cause. What was the second thing you said? Uh, wraith form? Use Wraith before uh, initiating. Wraith is your get out of Jail free card. Play aggro around the CD. No wraith. Be cautious. Pretty much it, right? Mm -hmm. I think what you could do is obviously like executing on these things is, is a lot harder than understanding them, but you know, it is what it is. It's something that you can actually definitely practice here. So right. let's pull up your form here and let's talk about. Move my curtain because I got too much glare. I can't even see this. Okay. Um, what do you have to get out of the session? Better understanding of game sense and understanding. Okay. Do you have any questions about the gameplay? I guess before we move on. Uh, the gameplay, no. I think I just need to focus a lot more on thinking about this stuff while I'm playing so that they become like it's not, you know, pick mechanics or pick game sense. It's I have to work on them both at the same time. Right, exactly, exactly. I think for you, it's going to be like, you know, pick the specific thing that you need to practice, which is one of the things that we put in your form and then practice that patiently. Because it looks like you're playing a lot of Overwatch, right? So you have the quantity there. 
It's going to be, is the quality of focus there? Um, you know, four hours a day around that is pretty darn good, but how much of those, how many of those games are, are full focus, full energy? Um, right. Obviously scrimmages are, are your most important focused hours. Uh, so those get priority, but even in rank too, like if you're practicing something in ranked, I think full focus as much as you can. Now, what I will caution you is in my experience, um, Generally, people only have around two to three hours of full focus practice per day, maybe, maybe four if you get a lot of sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So just be aware that you might not be able to fully focus for all of your Overwatch gameplay all the time, right? right? right. That, that's okay. That's okay. But you do need to have a certain percentage of, of training time fully focused. I, I think the best way to describe it is, is like um, if you were to... Uh, did you play sports much as a kid, yeah. high school? Okay, what sport did, or sports did you play? Uh, lacrosse. Okay, lacrosse. So, like, let's say that you were working on, like, what is it called? The juggling? You're running while you're, like, what is it called? Yeah. What's the proper term? I'm, I'm, I'm making myself look stupid. It's been a minute. I think it's... Uh... I'm just going to say juggling. Yeah, we're just going to say juggling. Juggling, right? Minute. But that's a fundamental skill, right? So, like, let's say when you were, like, nine years... When did you start playing? Uh, first year in middle school. So I don't know how, how what age. Yeah, like eleven years old, twelve years old, right? So, um, when you first started picking up the stick, you know, so you're 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 probably put a lot of time really focusing on like just handling the stick and juggling and like throwing it, right? So, if mm -hmm. you know when you're playing pickup lacrosse, that probably was really helpful, but it was also probably pretty helpful to just do a couple of drills that just really, really, really focused work. So you'd have part of your day maybe you were playing just lacrosse or playing for fun, or maybe you're doing scrimmages or whatever. But then all part of your day was like your full focus drills. The way I like to look at Overwatch is it's like, it's a really fun game. People play it for fun, right? Mm -hmm. But a certain percentage of that playing for fun needs to be playing for practice where you're giving it full focus. Generally, that might be for an hour. Maybe that's two hours. Maybe that's a couple of games. I don't really know. Um, and then if you play more and more and more and more, you know that your focus is going to be dipping, dipping lower and lower and lower. So you're playing more and more and more for fun and less and less and less for focus and for improvement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let, let's see here. What do you feel is funny back from improving? I feel like my setback is understanding for sure as well as self-discipline. Well, that kind of goes into what we were just talking about, right? Like right. It's, not, it, it's, it's, it's not because I don't know a single Overwatch League player that is fully focused for scrims all the time. It's not, I don't know a single one, but the ones that are more successful are more focused than the other ones, right? Like they're only, you know, autopiloting for a couple of team fights, you know, per map or, you know, they, they're able to take care of themselves better. So they give a little bit more energy, a little bit more hype, you know, or, or they have a little bit more time spent in the off season, fully focused and ranked or whatever like that. Um, so it's not about being always on all the time. But if you are having a hard, if you autopilot a lot, then, you know, can I give a little bit more effort, a little bit more energy um, and be specific with that energy and focus too. Like, like when we talk about like energy and focus, looking at the list in your DMS, that's what needs your energy. That's what needs your focus. If that makes sense. Right. Okay. Um, and you could do one of those things at a time too. I, I don't generally recommend trying to practice like four or five different things at once, you know, just fix one of those things. I'm playing Reapers. So I'm working on this or I'm fit playing soldiers. So I'm working on this. Um, and, but I wouldn't be working on my slide and my disruptor shot at the same time necessarily. Um, one of the thing, which is really important for me form, you spend a lot of time, uh, or spend time playing with friends in lower ranks and I might be creating bad habits. I tend to just have fun with my own mechanics and not think about my own play style. I would hate to quit playing with them on Overwatch entirely to improve, but I will, if I must. Well, based off of our last five, six minutes of conversation, you could probably rec guess what I would recommend. Do you have to quit? No. No. But, but what? But it shouldn't be as mindless as it is. Well, maybe. Here's what I would, here's what I would say. If you're playing with lower ranks and you know, playing around and screwing around with friends, make it totally mindless. But when you're not playing with lower ranks and friends, make it totally mindful. Okay. Eat your vegetables is what I'm saying. Okay. Eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. It's like, you know, if, I, if I'm trying to improve my basketball hoop skills and my friends want to go play pickup basketball, I'm going to be like, yo, that's all right. I got to do my dribbling drills. I got to take, you know, 100 free throws and practice my handles. I'll be there in an hour, guys. Y'all have fun. I'll be right. I'll be there in an hour. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what you're doing here. You know, 
play your ranked games, play your hour of focused rank, hour and a half, two hours of focused rank, get your scrim in, whatever. And then when you've eaten your vegetables, go play for fun. Turn your brain off totally. Okay. Because what you're doing is, the, is playing with friends going to build potentially some bad habits? Maybe. But if you're really, if, you're all, if your most focused time is when you're playing, quote unquote, properly with full focus, then it's a lot, a lot less likely that the lazy time afterwards can actually have an impact on, on what you're doing. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Okay. Any questions about anything? Training schedule, structure, anything? Um, yeah, you mentioned work on uh, one thing at a time. That yeah. makes sense. I heard a coach one time say it's like doing a Steam download. You don't download two games at one time. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I find a hard time like focusing on improving when in the moment because I get caught up in like, okay, how do I win this team fight instead of how do I right. improve? Well, your goal would be to like go in and be like, I'm going to nail every single disruptor shot this game. I'm going to keep reminding myself, disruptor shot, disruptor shot, disruptor shot, disruptor shot. Mm -hmm. And you can't worry about, that's why like focusing on winning is so uh, not dangerous, but it's not something you need to be careful about because winning is great. But if your priority is on winning, then you're going to be focusing on what do I need to do properly right now, whether it's hitting the shot or whatever, which is okay. But if you need to break a bad habit with your disruptor shot, your disruptor shot usage needs your full attention, not winning that team fight. Right. Good okay. players win games. If you want to be a good player, you need to fix your disruptor shot, your slide usage. The wins will come as a result of fixing those things. And when I say fixing, I don't even necessarily mean fully fixing, but improving. Like right. if, you, if you can get to a point where while autopiloting, you're still nailing like 75, 80% of your disruptor shots. That's a huge W, mm -hmm. right? Because the goal is to make your autopilot better. That's the goal. Because when you're autopilot, your autopilot is your true skill is what I will say. So if you're autopiloting and you're, and you're playing at like a mid-master's level, then you need to keep working at your autopilot until your mechanics, your cooldown usage, your positioning, your decision-making is autopilot master's one or GM five, if that makes sense. But that right. takes, that take, it takes thinking to upgrade your autopilot. That's the irony. Okay. That makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No, I think that'll be it from me. Okay. Well, 